this morning. We're on, we're on the Otter Hunt, so half past six, and a bit of porridge down neck, and uh, we'll get ourselves out there. A bit of light rain at the moment, so hopefully that's going to uh, dissipate and we can we can get cracking, get something done. But I'm trying to be quiet because this is the bed, and the wife's still asleep. So get this. So, well, it's seven o'clock. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, light's just coming up. So, we're on the lookout for otters. Okay, old uh, Lutra Lutra, as she's called. All right. The common otter, Eurasian otter. A lot of people think they see otters, but they're not. They're, uh, say they're a, they're a freshwater animal. They rely on freshwater. You might see them out in the sea, uh, you know, in these sea locks. But they're not a sea otter. They uh, they need fresh water to survive. So that brings me on to the first point. Really, is finding your otter. Okay. Now, when the water's like this, it's quite calm at the moment. So it can be pretty easy to spot, really. But you get a bit of a wave on there, a bit of a ripple, and it can be really difficult. You know, they they don't spend a lot of time on the surface of the water. They usually usually under it fishing because they do hunt a lot you know they eat a lot of fish so they're constantly hunting when they're not sleeping on the uh, on the kelp beds so first thing you need really is a good pair of binos you definitely need a good pair of binos because you're going to do a lot of looking through these okay now the way the way I approach it all right you can sit down and you can you can wait and wait for them to come to you but generally the most successful way I've found of photographing otters is to spot them and then just sit back and just watch what they're doing, watch where they're going, what direction they're going in. They'll eat a lot of the fish that they catch out in the water, they won't come in but occasionally when they catch a bigger fish they'll come into shore and that's when you need to make your move. <coughs> it's a case of keeping low down don't be silhouetted, you want to be downwind of them, alright, because they've got a wicked sense of smell. Apparently their eyesight isn't fantastic, I don't know how true that is, but uh, I always err on the side of caution. You know, I get cammed up, I've usually got, well, I've always got me, um, me gloves on, me cami gloves, and a face mask as well, because, you, honestly, you stand out like a sore thumb. I were, I were here last year and I was watching a group of photographers and they were, they were a good... I don't know, probably half a mile away. And I was watching them through binoculars and nobody had their hands or their faces covered and they just stood out like, like no one's business. So, you know, get some gloves on, just cover your skin up because it's light in it. So if you've been watching watching the otter and kind of keeping keeping level with it, because generally they'll move along the shoreline, you know, try and keep keep level with it. When it dives under the water to hunt for fish, that's when you need to make your move. So I generally don't give them any more than 10 seconds. I know that if they dive down, if you've seen that tail plop down, they're gonna be under the water for a bit. They might be under for 15, 20 seconds easily, but just err on the side of caution. So you have 10 seconds to make a move and just move along that shoreline or move a little bit closer to where you think they might be coming in. Because if it comes up and it's caught a big fish, it's not gonna be able to sort it out out on the water so what it's going to do it's going to come into the shoreline and hopefully then you'll be in a good position to get down and photograph it so clothing wise well I've got a I've got an old pair of black waterproof pants on because invariably the rocks around here they're dark 
you're on the kelp, you're on the seaweed, don't put any decent ones on because you could snag them. Footwear, it's a bit of a contentious issue really, I don't, I never know whether to put a pair of wellies on or a pair of boots, but I've got a pair of boots on, they give me a bit more grip, and I've got a pair of dry socks on because they will leak in. Uh, wellies, you can, you know, they can get a bit slippy. I'm just looking at that sunset, the sunrise, look at that, I'm going to spin you around. Look at that. Beautiful. That is amazing. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Getting out here and seeing things like that. the break on it. What a fantastic sunrise that is. So yeah, as I was saying, clothes wise, new cami jacket. I'll tell you what I've got on under here. I've got elbow pads on. Now it might seem a bit extreme but when I were here, I think I were here uh, back end of last year or it might have been February anyway, whenever it was, and um, I slipped on the seaweed. Because you will do, you'll go on your ass. There's no issue. So and I fell and I landed on my elbow because I had the camera in my hand so you obviously save the camera don't you so I fell on my elbow and it proper hurt you know it was bloody hell it was painful anyway when I got home it, it got a bit worse and I ended up with a what they call a bursitis and uh, honestly for five months it must have it had like a bloody big egg on the end of it and uh, I don't know whether I'd, I'd obviously damaged it somehow but uh, yeah pair of el elbow pads because you know you will you will slip and if you're unfortunate enough to go down on your elbow if you've got a bit of protection on there uh, you'll be right so and that, that's about it really I mean travel light as well don't be don't be taking a great big bag with you I mean I've, I've got me my tripod with video head on because I'm I'm hoping to do some video footage you know for this blog but um, all I do as well I've got I've got a couple of pouches, so I've got lens cleaning stuff. Uh, another one there. That's got that's got spare batteries in, uh, just bits and bobs. But don't be putting a big pack on because you need to, you know, you need to be scamping around and uh, you know you need to be pretty mobile. So try and keep your your gear as as light as you can. And that's about it really. So the tides right in at the moment, the big tides as well. So. Normally, there's masses of kelp beds out here, which that's the best time to see them really when they when the tides receded a bit because they don't like coming right into to a, a rocky shoreline. They prefer the the kelp beds where they can hide and, and curl up and sleep and whatever. Another another piece of kit that I find absolutely vital. Can't do without it when you're shooting otters. A bean bag. All right. Tripods. They're not good really in this situation. They really aren't. They're too clumbersome and they get in the way. You can't move quickly. Well, well I can't anyway. So, um, yeah, experience has taught me you need a you need a bean bag. Now this is one. This is one that I've made. Made it myself. And the beauty of this one, I'm sure you. It's got these. It's got these two handles on it. They don't all come with handles on like that, but. Uh, camera right the way I, I do it I've, I've obviously got my, my tripod foot on there right so it's, it's spun around like that so I can use that as an handle right, for carrying the camera I don't bother I take the strap off because uh, again it gets in the way it's flapping around and it's something else that you know maybe the otter can see it so it's just minimising uh, clutter, really. And what I do when I'm when I'm moving around, I'll put the put the camera on there, the handles, and I hold I hold everything together. 
so when I'm like a, like a bloody handbag in it but uh, when I'm moving across the seaweed and the, you know the kelp and across the rocks it just it just gives me a chance I've not got I've not got someone in that hand I've only got things in that hand so I've kind of three points of contact at all times so if I did if I did slip right the camera's protected so that'll go down and it'll, it'll kind of land on on the beanbag so it's a way of protecting the camera more than anything really but I can move quickly because you have to be able to you know you've got to be a bit nimble really with these otters like I said you've got to be able to move as soon as you're under the water you've got to move 10 seconds down again and then just observe and see where they are they might be going back up the other way then in which case you know you see you're kind of following them wait for them to dive again and then follow them 10 seconds sit still and they'll pop up by then they might have caught a decent fish and they might be coming in and they'll be right opposite you and you're in the best position then to get your pictures so yeah all right <laughs> so there's a lot to think about um, for anyone anyone that you know they, they see all these pictures of the otters up on Mull and you know surrounding islands and that if you think you're gonna come up here and straight away you're gonna go on with a bucket full of really top-notch otter pictures forget it because it ain't happening because it's hard work otters are difficult to photograph you can be dead lucky you can be really lucky sometimes and they'll just be there in front of you uh, but you know 99 times out of 100 you really do have to work for your shots uh, you've got to know what you're doing you've got to know your field craft and uh, yeah you've got to find them first so you know if there's a, a likely spot have a look for that that fresh water source you know coming down off the hills and uh, have a look for their, their uh, tracks as well and the sprints because they'll they mark the territory with the uh, with the droppings what they call sprints so you'll you'll see them they're, they're a little bit like a, a little you know fox dump and you know they smell a bit fish you'll see fish bones in them and that uh, because they will they'll range for a long way they'll range up to 25 miles with an otter depending on how much food there is around here I mean these are these are rich hunting grounds these so they don't they don't go so far but you know in places where there's not a lot of food probably on the smaller rivers and that where the uh, the fish aren't as concentrated they will range literally for 20 25 miles so you know you can be uh, you can be doing a bit of legwork but it's a little bit easier on the coast because of the amount of uh, fish that there are about but just something to bear in mind we're just going to uh, we're going to have a walk further up the headland and just see what's about. See, they'll be out in the bay at the moment fishing, and uh, we'll go and see what we can see. All right. We haven't seen anything yet, but uh, early days yet. I say with the state of the tide, normally this this area down at low water, it'd be well, just kelp everywhere. That's your best chance of seeing them, to be honest. They'll be out there. They'll be out hunting out there, you know, but probably a fair way out. So you need that uh, them big kelp beds from to come in somewhere where they can they can rest up and bring the fish in that they've caught. What a beautiful place to be, eh? Might as well be sat here, eh, watching this rather than in scratch you. Fantastic.
thing is with these otters, it's a constant game of cat and mouse. I'm just watching, I'm watching one, he's about 200 yards off the shore. He's heading, he's heading up that way where we were sat before. Now the tide's going out now, it's receding. So there's a big, big leg of, uh, of, of kelp, like a, you know, a little peninsula that's opening up now. I've seen him on there before. So he's kind of heading that way, slowly. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to gamble. I'm going to, I'm going to head up there, make my way out onto the, onto the kelp, and then hopefully, hopefully he'll uh, come on there because they, you know, they don't stay out at, at sea for a, a real long time. They'll come in and have a rest uh, once they, once they've had a fill of food. They'll come in and curl up and, and lie down. So that's what we're going to do. I'll spin you around. I'll show you exactly where we're going. So that's where we're going to head. We're going to head for that piece of land jutting out and see if he comes up there. Just, just watching one at the moment. Probably about 100 yards out off the shore. Catching fish. Every dive he's coming up with like a butcher fish. We're hoping that he catches something bigger and decides to come into the shore to eat it because they can't handle these big fish uh, when, they're, when they're out on the water. I just, wow, that looks like it might be a minky whale. No. Pot of dolphins. The one I just saw the fin come out. So yeah, fingers crossed. Let's hope he catches a big fish. Yeah, another bit of a tip for you. When you're actually, you know, out on the on the shoreline and you're you're looking for the otters, it's a good idea to get as low down as you can. So you've got you've got the foreshore and you've got the horizon in your objective lens. So you can effectively you can see everything in one sweep rather than being higher up and you're constantly you know you, you've got that much to look at you're looking up and down and kind of zigzagging and, and you kind of lose track it does your head and send you bonkers so get low down and then you can just do your scanning in one one complete pass which makes life a bit easier oh and this one he's dived probably about eight times now He's moving down the coast, so keeping about 10 or 15 yards from the shoreline. He's coming closer in all the time. Just waiting for him to come back up and dive again. We'll make a move. There he is. So I'm watching him diving. I'm going to give him 15 seconds. He's been diving for about 20, 25 seconds. If you can make him out on the GoPro, but he's just out there now. I'm dying. I'm dying. 14, 13, 14, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and get down. Okay. Only 15 seconds. He's still down. I haven't been too old for this. There he is.
How are we doing everyone? Well, it's our last morning. Well, we're going home tomorrow, so it's my last morning out trying to photograph these otters. And, uh, hey, I'll be honest, I've struggled a bit this time. I have. I've seen a, you know, we've seen a few. And yesterday, we got, you know, reasonably close to one of them. And uh, I put my hat back on, it's, uh, sun's bouncing. So, <clears throat> yeah, we got, uh, well, I didn't get any decent pictures of it, to be honest. Not what I'd call decent anyway. Loads of loads of pictures of it, you know, out in the out in the water, diving and fishing and that. But I really want to get them them close up pictures, you know, on the shoreline. And it weren't happening. So this is <laughs> last chance saloon, really. So I put myself under a bit of pressure, to be honest, with this film because what I what I tend to do is, uh, you know, I go out, get all the footage, and then come back and then put a film together. But you know, I, I did that first, the first one, part one, and uh, you know, I've been I've been putting them out while I've been out here up in Scotland, and um, well, that first one anyway, and you know, I've kind of bigged it up. So we've got the eagles part. That's that's uh, you'll have seen that one by now, but uh, the otters one, you know, it's kind of took the shine off it a bit really, because. You know, I feel under pressure to, to get the pictures and the video footage. So when I've been coming back and I've not got it, I've been a little bit disappointed, which I shouldn't be, really. You know, I mean, you know, it's just a blessing being out here, to be honest. It's absolutely beautiful. It's stunning. And any any pictures you get is is always a bonus. So this is our our last morning. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, if we, uh, if we don't get them, we don't get them. But, uh, hey, that's it. That's wildlife photography, isn't it? So, we're out, what time is it now? It's quarter to ten now, and low water is about half past two. So, I'll show you where we are. There you can. I mean, look at that. What a place, eh? Take some beating, does that? So, come low water. There'll be some massive kelp beds out here, and um, that's what I've found. High tide, they don't seem to be showing the otters. They've, um, you know, they they don't like coming in on the rocks really. They'd rather be on the uh, on these kelp beds where they can curl up and have a sleep. And uh, you know, if they've got a big fish, they can they can bring it in and kind of you know tuck tuck away in the kelp and and hide and eat the food. But uh, so I'm expecting them, you know, to start knocking about in the next couple of hours once the uh, once the tide starts ebbing. So <clears throat> this morning, when I've been using the bean bag, I've been uh, it's been a little bit difficult. I've been trying to get some video footage, obviously, because I'm filming with the, you know, the the D500. The, I've got the the 150 to 600 on, and as I said in the first part of the video, I always take the bean bag with me, but. Um, it's hard to do video footage on the beanbag. So, what I've done, I've put the video head on this little Novo tripod. So once I've got that, yeah, you know, once I've got it sat on a rock or something, I've got that nice fluid motion where I can get a bit of film footage done. So, a bit of a change of tactics, but hopefully, Hopefully it'll work. It should be it should be fine. It's just nice to get the the video footage. You know the the beanbag's superb for still photos, but you know especially when they, they get a little bit wet as well, and it, you know you kind of get that jerky movement. You can't get the the smooth fluid motion of the of the video head. So we'll just sit up here for the next few hours with the binoculars and uh, see yeah, see if they come along. So fingers crossed.
at Dublin down with Fox. We're on the ferry from Craig Muir to Auburn, which is always a depressing trip because it means we're leaving Mull. <laughs> it's an absolutely fantastic place. So if you get the chance to come over here, it's, uh, it's amazing, especially when the weather's like this. It's not always like this. We do get the first year of uh, the grotty weather, but uh, yeah, it's a special place. So. Thanks for joining us in our uh, our little our three little films that we put together. So thanks for joining us. Stay safe, everyone, and uh, yeah, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you like, and uh, we'll see you out there.